Good morning, everyone. I'm Park Jin Seok. I'm working for HD Hyundai Global Service. Today, I'm going to talk about cyber security solution of a ship's development and commercialization status of HD Hyundai Global Service. This is the content of my presentation. I have six parts in this presentation. The first two parts will be familiar to you in number three and number four and number five have been discussing between ship owners and ship builders and shipping companies. Before I start my presentation, I'd like to give you a brief overview of my organization. HD Global Service, Hyundai Global Service has developed its own smart solution. The new build market will require increasingly cyber resilience for newly built build ships and we have been working on system integration and starting this August, to be exact, August 1st, we have been running this team. Last year, IACS withdrew UR E26 as well as E27. For E27, revision was announced and the effective date was delayed to delayed by six months and E26. Its revision will be released by the fourth quarter of this year. And the effective date will be delayed by six months, just like 20, E27. And there could be more grace period. For E26, more specifics need to be determined. So we are expecting more revisions. My team is closely working with the cybersecurity team at KR so that we can cope with uncertainties in the future and to deal with the new revisions. As the previous speaker said, we are seeing more and more eco-friendly shifts. EXI, EOMRV, and CII, those Mandatory requirements have been introduced to the market, and they all require data collection and transportation onshore to offshore has been also made. It might sound like a distant future, but LEO suppliers will offer and will make shifts more accessible. And there are some prerequisites we have to ensure before we open up an orchard in the era for autonomous shipping. So cybersecurity is part of our daily life, especially in shipping. I originally planned to introduce you our cybersecurity system. I plan to unbox it in front of you, but due to some constraints made out of IACS, I can do that as I planned. Let me briefly introduce you to UR26. For safe operation of shifts, This is about cyber resilience, which is the capability to reduce the occurrence and mitigating the effects of cyber incidents arising from the disruption or impairment of operational technology. Here, OT is the word, keyword. And if that happens, if disruption or impairment happens, it will cause significantly. Cyber resilience will protect shifts In IXUR226, 
requires chiefs to be equipped with cyber resilience capabilities so that cyber originally a uh, cyber disruption or cyber impairment would not happen let me briefly touch upon the cyber resilience and cyber security cyber security this is what you already know so let me explain cyber resilience first cyber resilience is the ability to quickly recover and restore systems networks or data from cyber attacks or anomalies. And cybersecurity means protection from hacking malicious attacks or unauthorized access to systems and data. And cyber resilience on board, the cyber resilience of a ship ensures the continuity of a ship operations by enhancing the ability to respond and recover from cyber attacks. The cyber resilience includes not only defense against cyber attacks on ships, but also quick response and restoration to normalcy in case a cyber attack succeeds. This is where we stand in terms of cyber security preparation. Some shipyards are already prepared for cyber security, but there is variance among of shipyards and shipping companies and liners. That means E26 and E27 are not clear enough, so some they need some clarification. And some ship owners are saying they are overlapping requirements between the two. Let's take some case one. It requires, case one requires application of all cybersecurity measures, but case two requires only part of them. And this criteria has been interpreted differently among shipping liners or ship owners. Or CPS can be controlled all at once, including OT equipment. The centralized management can be possible. Document control can be done in a shorter time. And there could be more requirement for security equipment installation because there could there will be more security zones. So shifts need to be prepared for those zones and cybersecurity equipment. And this will raise the bar of cybersecurity. Some ships are required to have the overall cybersecurity equipment according to demand from ship owners. So two E26 goals may not be achieved they will make some shipping companies or ships not be able to meet the requirements of international regulations. We may know, we not we do not know what will happen in the future, but at least we need some safety measures in place. have cyber net uh, cyber resilience for some networks and cyber network for overall network they need needs to be decided so that there is no confusion or uncertainties for shipyards and ship owners 
Let me tell you the importance of dedicated cybersecurity solutions for ships. Most of the shipping companies are looking at different options of solutions, and there are cheaper options and more affordable options and many different options. But these cybersecurity solutions need to be sophisticated, especially because ER26 and E20, E26 and E27 are not clear enough. Interconnection is one of the key important areas. NMS and firewall are the areas where the operator's discretion and judgment is required. And operators, in case of a firewall incident, need to be prepared for effectively and adequately handling the incident. This is one of the most frequently asked questions from ship owners. OTS issue can happen, but sometimes it cannot be identified by NMS. So some operators may be left helpless. So in conclusion, NMS, firewall, and OT, the interconnected monitoring between the three is required. As you can see on the slide, it should be able to go back and forth between the three. But it's not clear, as I repeatedly mentioned. So we are waiting for a clarification of UR826 and UR827. CQ that we are developing. Can handle the overall security system for NMS, OT, and since we are providing uh, controllers for ships, so we are ensuring compatibility, network monitoring, a security solution, and security blocking. Actually, we are testing them for now, and in the future, engine control system and other uh, control system and the terminal of OT, we are going to make all of them part of our uh, cybersecurity solution. Uh, this is the summary of Hyundai Global Service Solution. We are testing and verifying the internet working between NMS, firewall, and OT. And with KR, we are working on IACS URE27 type approval certification. We are expecting this to be completed by the first half in 2024. We plan to have a team dedicated to ship cyber security service after service service. And we will provide a subscription service for a malicious mails. To ensure ship's safety, we plan to install remote control tower. With that, I'd like to conclude my presentation.